What's up guys? Welcome to your Git tutorial for beginners. My name is Sam. I have about seven years of experience using Git and I use it pretty much every day at work or really any project that I'm working on. I've used it at every job I've had so it's pretty much impossible to avoid learning it if you want to be a software developer. The good news is it's pretty easy to pick up and Hopefully if I do a good job in this video, you guys will agree. So this video is to give you an introduction on Git and give you everything you need to get started. And we've got a lot to cover, so let's start with an overview. First, we're gonna be talking about what is Git and why do you even need it? Secondly, we're gonna be talking about how to install it, either on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Then we're gonna be talking about the Git basics and how to get started. And finally, we're gonna end with branching. I should mention that a prerequisite for this video is that you need to be able to at least have somewhat of an understanding of the command line because Git is essentially a command line tool. There are interfaces for Git such as source tree, Git Kraken, fork, which is what I use, but user interfaces change, they come and go but I feel like the best way to learn it or start learning it is through the command line. Before we start, make sure you guys hit that like button. It really does help the video and the channel a lot. All right, so what is Git? Simply put, it's a tool used to keep track of changes in a code base. It allows you to have checkpoints within your code. So you do some dev work and then you would check in your code. You do some dev work, you check in your code. So say you do some more work and then all of a sudden your whole program blows up. Well then now you can just go back to that previous checkpoint and you have a clean slate. It also helps you organize your code base by keeping track of all the different features you implement. It also helps uh, facilitate multiple developers working within the same project. Another thing is to not get this confused with GitHub. GitHub is a website that lets you store your code in a remote location. So say your computer blows up or something, you don't lose all your code, but we're only gonna be talking about Git in this video, not GitHub. So how do you install Git? Well, you could either go to Google and type in Git and it's probably gonna be the first one. Or you could go to git-scm.com. You would go down to downloads and if you have Mac, you would click on this link and you could either install it via Homebrew or if you have Xcode already installed, uh, you should be able to access Git from the Mac terminal. If we go back for Linux, it shows you how to install via all the different distributions that you could have. Uh, so if you have something like a Debian or Ubuntu, you would just do like an app get install git. So I'm on a Windows machine right now. So I would click on this. It gives you the executable. So if we want to go ahead and click that. All right, so this setup should pop up. Uh, you're going to go ahead and click next. Uh, I will just keep it on default. Click next again. Click next again. And then you would install. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to install it again. But uh, yeah, basically you would just install here and then it should be good to go. So at this point, you should have this program called git bash installed. And in order to check that git is properly installed, you can just do git dash dash version. All right, so now we need a folder to store our project in. So we could just do uh, make a new directory and we could call it my project and we can change directory into my project. So let's take a look at this in File Explorer. We'll go to uh, desktop slash my project. Right now the folder is empty. So it's really just an empty folder, right? So how do we make this into a Git project? Well, you would just go to the command line and you would type in Git init. As we see here, initialize empty Git repository. So let's go here, but hey, look, this folder is still empty. So how do we know that this is actually a Git folder? Well, what it does is it actually creates a hidden folder. So if we want to expand this and we check hidden items, we see that we have this dot git file here with a bunch of stuff in here. You do not need to know what any of this stuff is. This is just so git can do its thing. So let's go back to my project and let's go ahead and close this here. Let's go into this editor. So I'm going to be using Atom for this. Uh, you could really use any text editor and I'm going to go ahead and open our folder here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. And let's just type file one. Let's go ahead and save it as file1.txt. And as we see here, we have that file here. So if we go back to our command line here, we can go ahead and, first of all, if you wanna see all the git commands, you would just type in git and enter. And uh, this would show you really everything you need, just, I don't know, in case you forget. So now we can go ahead and type in git status. And this shows you, well, the status of your repository. And right now it says untrack files 
that file one dot text. So before we go any further, I think it's best to understand the workflow of Git. So initially you have this working directory, and this is really any changes you make to a file or adding a new file would start out in working directory. Once you're ready to check in your work, you would move it from the working directory to a staging area. This is basically just getting it ready to check in to your repository. Once it's in the staging area, you would what's called commit your changes, and that moves it into your repository, which means it's now being tracked by Git. So if we go back to our command line here, we see right now this is, if it's in red, that means it's in that working directory stage. So we need to move it to our staging area. So how that's done is we would do git add, and then we would type in the file that we want to move. So it would be file1.txt. So now we would do git status again. And now we see that it's in green and it's saying changes to be committed. So if it's in green, that means that it's now in the staging area. So we want to move it now to the repository. So how that would look is we would type in git commit and we would push enter. Now this takes you to the Vim editor. So how this would work, you would just type in I and then you would just type in like initial commit or something. I'm going to show you guys a better way to do this. So go ahead and delete this. I'm going to type escape and then colon Q exclamation point to get out of this. So what we could do is we could type in git commit dash M and then in quotes, you can just type in your message here. So every git commit requires a message. So we could just do initial commit and then go ahead and hit enter. All right, so now our file has been successfully added to our repository. And if we do a git status here, we see that there's nothing to commit all right, so let's try to add another file here. So we could do something like, let's just add it from the command line. We could do touch file2.txt. So that created the file. Let's go ahead and do a git status. We see that file2.txt is in red, which means that it's in our working directory. Let's go ahead and move it to the staging area. So we could do git add, and then we can type in the file name again, but there's a better way to do this, or you can just type in period. And this will move everything that's in your working directory to the staging area. So we do git status, then we'll do git commit dash m added file to dot text. So git status, we see that we're now on a clean branch. Now I'm going to teach you guys another command, git log. This shows all the commits that we've had so far. So as you can see here, we have you know our initial commit as well as our second commit and it shows like the time and everything. So this is just kind of like if you want to go back and see what the commits were. So that's really the basic workflow for Git. You make your changes in the working directory, you move it to your staging area, you commit it to your repository. The next thing I want to talk about is Git ignore. Now there's going to be certain files that you might not want to check in to your source control. These could be something like executables that were created when the program started running, could be like log files stuff that doesn't really have anything to do with the code and would just add like some cluttering. So what Git allows you to do is specify files or file types that you don't ever want to be checked in. So if we go back to our command line, clear it out, what we would have to do is we would have to add a file called dot git ignore. So if we go back to Atom, we can double click that. And let's say uh, we don't want uh, log files to be added to our repository. So what we could do is we do star dot log. And this star here is a wild card, basically saying anything that ends in dot log, don't commit it, like don't keep track of it. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and add that file to our repository. And let's go ahead and test and see if this worked. So let's go ahead and create a new file called test dot log. Now let's do a git status. And we see that here, it says nothing to commit, even though we just added this, uh, let's list the items here. We have file one, file two, and test. But since that dot log is in our git ignore, git knows, or git is smart enough to not keep track of it. All right, so let's just go ahead and remove test.log. All right, the last thing we're gonna be talking about is branching. Now I feel like to really understand branching and why we do it, I feel like it'll be easier if I do a diagram for this. So let's say we initially had our project, right? And then we added that file one here, and let's say this is a commit here. And then the next thing we did was we added another file, right? That was file two. 
And then we even added that git ignore here as well. So let's number these as zero, one, and two. And then these are our checkpoints or our commits, right? So this itself is actually a branch. And in Git, this is always gonna be called your master branch. So now say your manager comes in and they're like, hey, you know what, it would be really cool if we had a certain feature, go ahead and implement it. So what you could do is you can just, you know, keep making your changes for your new feature. Uh, that's your third commit. Uh, that's commit number four, etc. Now, the problem with this is, say at this point, there's another team member who also needs to add their own feature. Well, it's going to be kind of confusing because now they're going to get like your half completed feature and they're going to be starting to add stuff as well. And it's just going to get kind of messy here, right? So there's a better way to do this. So let's go ahead and delete all this. So at this point, you would create another branch off of your master branch. So let's change colors here. So what you would do is you would just create your own branch and let's call this new feature. And really at this point, you've really just made a copy of your master branch. So at this point, now you can go ahead and just, you know, add as many commits as you want. Now say you have a teammate and now they need to add their own feature. Well, let's go ahead and change the color again. And now they don't really need to worry about your feature, right? They can go ahead and create their own branch and add commits to that branch. So now say you're finally done. At this point, what you do is you just merge your changes back into master. So what this would do is it would just create another commit on master, but now it has all of these commits that you made as well. All right, so now that we have a diagram here, let's actually put this into practice. All right, so now we're back on the terminal here. Uh, what we can do is we can type in git branch and this shows all the branches we have. Right now we currently have one. And remember when I said we have that master branch? Here it is, and the asterisk and the green text lets us know that we're on this branch. So now we wanna go ahead and create a new one. So we'll do git branch and then the name of the branch. So we want it to be called new feature. So let's do git branch again. We see that we have that new feature, but now we need to switch over to that branch. And what we need to do is we need to type in git checkout new feature switch to branch new feature get branch we see now that we're on new feature so let's say our feature was just to add a new file so we'll do touch file3.txt let's go ahead and stage and commit that file All right, so let's go to our file explorer here. So now we see we have that file one, file two, and now file three. Now, this has only been applied to that new feature branch. So let's go ahead and check out master. And notice what happens here. That file three disappears because it's not a part of this uh, branch. It's not being tracked by it. And even if we do git status, we see that there's nothing to commit. So at this point, like I mentioned, we need to merge our new feature branch into our master branch. So how that looks like is just git merge new feature. And you could even do tab to auto complete that. Now let's go ahead and push enter and notice what happens here on the file explorer. Boom, we see file three has now been merged back into master. So we see that we're still on our master branch. Now let's do a git log here. And if we look up here, that commit that was in our other branch now gets added to our master branches log. All right, so now that we're done with that, we could either keep that new feature branch or we could delete it with git branch dash D and then new feature. Now, if we do git branch, we see that only the master branch is there. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is really the basics of Git to get you up and running. Uh, there are obviously more advanced features like resolving merge conflicts, like if two people change the same file and try to merge it into the same branch. How does it, uh, how does it resolve that? There's another thing called rebasing. Uh, that's for another video. And, and I'll tell you what, guys, if this video gets, let's say 500 likes, I will make a follow-up video to this where we go into more advanced concepts, uh, as well as how you could uh, push your code to like a, a remote repository like GitHub. So hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of that video. Uh, this is, like I mentioned, something that you pretty much need to know as you're as a developer you know there are other version control software like 
Uh, there's one called Mercurial, there's one called Subversion, which I've used, but in my opinion, Git is by far the best one and it, it is the most popular one. So yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully that all made sense. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, but as always, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, keep on coding. <laughs>